We are down to number five in our countdown of the top ten championship matches in Royal Rumble history. Now, two weeks ago, number seven in the countdown was the WWE title match between AJ Styles and John Cena from the 2017 Royal Rumble. Last week, number six, was the last man standing match between John Cena and Umaga from the 2007 Royal Rumble. This week, we're down to number five. We have officially cracked the top five. And believe it or not, we're not done yet with John Cena. Number five in the countdown is the triple threat match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Brock Lesnar, John Cena, and Seth Rollins at Royal Rumble 2015. One of the all-time great triple threat matches in WWE history. Uh, I don't think I could put it higher than the Rock, Undertaker, Kurt Angle match at Vengeance back in 2002, or uh, even the three-way at WrestleMania 20, but this one is up there on that list. This is the third consecutive match in this top ten to involve John Cena. And for all of the shit that he has gotten for his wrestling ability over the years and the way he dresses and all that, when you look back at his big pay-per-view matches... He delivers more often than not against JBL, against Shawn Michaels, against Edge, against Brock Lesnar, against Umaga, against CM Punk, against Seth Rollins, against AJ Styles. The man has had some classic matches. The U.S. title open challenge that he did after WrestleMania a few years ago was great until everybody started doing open challenges for their titles, which is not so great. It's actually really lazy. But you take these three matches from this countdown so far, plus those two Royal Rumble matches that he won in 2008 and 2013, and I would make the argument that if Shawn Michaels is Mr. WrestleMania, or The Undertaker is Mr. WrestleMania, and Bret Hart, as I've said on this show before, I think is Mr. SummerSlam, and Randy Orton is Mr. Survivor Series, then John Cena is Mr. Royal Rumble. Now, some people might say, wait a minute, wait a minute, Stone Cold Steve Austin, because he won three of them. Other people might say, no, wait, it's Kane, because Kane has been in more Rumbles, I think, than anybody else in history, and he might still own the eliminations record. Uh, those are all Rumble match stats. I'm talking more than just Rumble matches. I would make the case that John Cena is that guy. Now, the previous summer, after beating Evolution, the Shield was no more. Seth Rollins, he betrayed Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose on Raw. He aligned with the authority. Then he won the Money in the Bank briefcase. Brock Lesnar, coming off ending the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania, he went on to annihilate John Cena at SummerSlam, win the world title, a spot that was originally earmarked not for John Cena, but for Daniel Bryan. Had he not gotten hurt and had to forfeit the title... Uh, instead, he got hurt, he had to forfeit, John Cena took his place, and John Cena was the one who got squashed instead. And it is funny, I enjoyed the hell out of it. A lot of people enjoyed watching John Cena get squashed by Brock Lesnar. Had Daniel Bryan been the one to get squashed, oh my god, <laughs> there would have been such an uproar. So we kind of dodged a bullet on that one, or he did, I should say. They had a rematch, Cena and Lesnar did the following month at Night of Champions, Cena was on the verge of winning, Rollins interfered cost him the title. Rollins then tried to cash in on Brock, but Cena stopped him from doing so. Now, they did Team Cena against Team Authority at Survivor Series. That's where Sting debuted. He cost Seth Rollins the match, which meant the Authority was supposed to be no more. And I think they were for all of a couple weeks. So we thought. They did an angle on Raw about a month later where Rollins was threatening to break Edge's neck unless John Cena agreed to reinstate the Authority. Cena said, oh, I guess saving Edge's life is more important than good television. He agreed. And so as a result, Rollins was then gifted by the authority a championship match at the Royal Rumble. This was originally promoted as the last ever match one-on-one -on -one between Brock Lesnar and John Cena until they added Rollins to the mix to make it a triple threat. And it made things a lot more interesting because Rollins had the money in the bank briefcase. So there was a lot of speculation at that time that Maybe Rollins was added as a way that, you know, John Cena can pin him and not Brock and win the championship. And then maybe Rollins would cash in because Brock would just destroy John Cena, leave him laying, and then Rollins can cash in and win the title. 
I think the plan that they ultimately went with was a hell of a lot better because out of that, we got an excellent match between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. I would argue still the best match they ever had and one of the greatest WrestleMania finishes of all time. This match. This match here was outstanding from start to finish. Non-stop action right out of the gate. Brock kills them with Germans. Double Germans to Jamie Noble and, and Joey Mercury at the same time. One in each arm. Uh, you know, Cena got some moves in. Rollins kind of would worm his way into spots. Uh, Cena and Rollins teamed up. They said, look, we got to work together here. So they teamed up. They they took out Lesnar, tried to take Lesnar out, which only made sense because this whole thing was built up. You know, Brock was built up and still is to this day as this unstoppable force that no one man can possibly stop. Cena speared Lesnar through the barricade by the timekeeper's area. Later on, he got him sprawled out on one of the announce desks. Seth Rollins then hit probably the greatest diving elbow off the top rope from the post to the desk that I've ever seen. Go back and watch Mick Foley at WrestleMania 2000. We go from one end of the spectrum to the other. Foley just missed the table. <laughs> he couldn't get all of it. But here, Rollins got all of it. He flew through the air. You watch this thing back in slow motion. It's a thing of beauty. The height he got on that thing. And so he took Brock out of the match for a while while, you know, the and then the announcers later claimed Brock had a broken rib as a result. Uh, that gave Rollins and Cena several minutes together to have basically their own match. Uh, they work well together. They would go on later that year to have some great singles matches. Then later on, uh, Rollins busted out a Phoenix Splash for the first time in his run in WWE. And really, you know, when I look back at this match, you know, we talk about Triple H's match. Uh, people do, I do, with Mick Foley at the 2000 Royal Rumble as being a star-making performance for him. And for me, it's the first time I really saw in that match Triple H as a headliner. I looked at him differently when that match was over. You could say the same thing here for Seth Rollins. I think a lot of people knew that this guy was poised for the main event, was being set up for the main event, but I don't think it was really until this match that he opened a lot of eyes for people about just how good he could be. Uh, that diving elbow and that Phoenix Splash was a star-making performance from him. Uh, he had barely landed the move before Brock came out of nowhere. He slid back inside. He laid him out with a German. Gave a suplex to Cena. Suplex to Rollins again, only this time he landed on his feet. He grabbed the money in the bank briefcase that was sitting there. He clobbers Brock with it, not once but twice... Then he positions the briefcase uh, underneath Brock's face. He's going to curb stomp him onto the briefcase. And when Rollins hits the ropes and he comes off, he jumps up into the air. Lesnar catches him on his shoulders in midair and hits a monster F5 for the win. He had done the same thing earlier in the match. Rollins had gone for a springboard. Brock caught him on his shoulders and kept his balance and then hit an F5, but then Cena made the save. Not this time. Brock gets the pin. An electric finish to what overall was an awesome match. Fast forward to WrestleMania. Rollins, as we all know, he lost to Randy Orton on that show. Uh, but again, even in defeat, all people were talking about when that match was over was that incredible RKO spot where Rollins went for the curb stomp and Randy propelled him up into the air and uh, caught him with an RKO on the way down. Later that night, Rollins runs in during the main event, cashes in, pins Roman Reigns, becomes WWE Champion. For the very first time. Here we are now. Almost four years later. And it's looking like Rollins may finally get that big win. Over Brock at Wrestlemania. Uh, the story is there for them. If they want to tell it. Uh, the one man. The one Shield member. Uh, Lesnar has never pinned one on one. Is Seth Rollins. And Rollins has yet to beat Brock Lesnar. You know. Pin, pin Brock Lesnar in the middle of the ring. He insults him on television for being an absentee champion. You know, this time there's no money in the bank briefcase. There's no sneak attacks. They could do it straight up one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. Uh, unless Vince, uh, you know, maybe the whole, like I said earlier, maybe the whole Vince setup with AJ Styles leads to him and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And AJ goes to Raw. Uh, I'm fine with either one of those matches. Although I am worried about the idea of AJ going to Raw. Uh, but the Rollins match has a better story and more history behind it. 